Welcome back to Talk Today. We'll have the papers in just a moment, but here's what else is coming up in the programme. Can Suella Braverman and Rishi Sunak stop the boats? One former Home Office special advisor doesn't think so. We'll ask her why in the next half an hour, as three new medical schools will be announced by Health Secretary Steve Barclay later today. At 8 o'clock, we'll ask, will it make any difference at all? And good news, food prices may have fallen for the first time in two years, but... Food banks are still seeing a huge demand. We're asking you about the cost of your weekly shop, all of that before nine. Let's take a look, though, now at some of this morning's front pages. The Times leading with the PM's plans to scrap the northern leg of HS2. More of that coming up. The Express focused on what they call Rishi's path to victory, announcing what's best for Britain. An unforgivable, declare the Daily Mirror, as they speak to the mother of Bradley Lowry after football yobs is terrible, made fun of the six-year-old Sunderland mascot who tragically died in 2017. At the Times, Hugo Rifkin and author and broadcaster Emma Wolfe are here with us to look through this morning's papers. Welcome back both. Emma, you've got the front page of the mail for us. Yep, so front page of the mail. Britain is the best country to be black in, says Kemi. A woman I have a lot of time for. This is Kemi Badenoch, the business secretary, who gave a tub-thumping speech at the uh, conference yesterday, at the Tory party conference in Manchester. And she's been saying uh, Britain is a fantastic place to be, to be black in. She's rejecting this narrative of hopelessness around ethnic minorities. And she even quoted um, Martin Luther King. She said people should be judged by the content of their character, not the colour of their skin. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of high-profile black leaders, black politicians, agree with her. That well, we live in... Britain is one of the least racially divided and divisive societies in the world. And there are many, many opportunities. And this Labour thing, this Keir Starmer tweeting about, you know, black, uh, black history is British history and talking about racial equality acts and all of this kind of stuff... Mm. Is, is really unnecessary virtue signalling. Do you think black history is British history, though? We can't ignore the fact that black people have been part of our history for a long time, and that's often been I agree overlooked. With that. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. I'm talking about Keir Starmer okay. trying to sow racial division, which is totally I, I, unnecessary. I think, it's, I think it's really interesting. I think, I've said it before, I think any form of racism is abhorrent, Hugo Rifkin, but here's somebody, a high-profile black politician, saying this is a fantastic country, and that surely is a good message, as Emma Wolfe says. Of course. There's a, there's, a, I mean, there's a lot that I don't like about Kemi Badenoch. She is fascinating on race. She always talks about race in a really, really interesting way, a really fresh way. The fact that she, she, she refuses to identify as a member of an a minority that's oppressed in any sort of way. She says that's not her life experience, which I think is really interesting. Obviously, the subtext of this story is Suella Braverman's speech last yes. week. You know, you've got two people positioning themselves within the Conservative Party. You had Braverman, who basically wanted to paint this picture of Britain as a kind of sort of, you know, racist hellhole, although in a way that she sort of approved of, in a way that I can quite understand. Whereas Kemi, Kemi Badenoch is saying, no, not that, much more mm. positive picture. And this sort, of, uh, this sort of positive message on race from the Conservatives, I quite like the fact that they're doing it. I was going to say, I'll have a little bet with you, Pound. OK. Kemi Badenoch will be the next leader of the Tory party by yep. a mile. I'll by a mile. We'll see. And I'll bet you might I pound. just suggest, without saying the wrong thing, interesting the Tory party gets slaughtered for lack of diversity, as the party will what? Have had female prime ministers... Yeah, their cabinet. Uh, an, an, ...an Asian prime minister mm -hmm. and possibly a black leader. Yep. I don't see that in the Labour Party with the greatest of respect No, I agree. All. But it's also about the policies that are made for not just the people within the party, but the people... I think Baden Oaks a vote winner. I yeah, and, and at the end of the day, who are we? We're four white people talking about a black woman who's saying her experience yeah. on race. Mm -hmm. However, I would point to the Casey Report, the Lammy Review, you know, other uh, influential black figures, um, sorry, with, with David Lammy, who have spoken about institutionalised racism within the country. I think, you, you know, you can't really completely ignore the fact that... No, you can't. But the day I take a lecture well. from David Lammy, if I think that he's going to be the Foreign Secretary, I think I might have to leave the country. Let's move on. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm with there you is now. not a ma there is, I cannot. I cannot imagine that he's going to be the Foreign Secretary. Sorry, beyond me. Uh, Hugo... I nearly said Hugo Spear, then. Wrong. Uh, Hugo <laughs> Rifkin, uh, you've got the lead on the eye. This is about Liz Truss. Yes, the, so the smash hit at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. Turns out to be a woman called Liz Truss. <laughs> the lettuce. If you remember her. The lettuce. <laughs> she may have, in the end, have lasted longer than the lettuce. Now, it's people... Are, crowds of people are queuing to see her, to the consternation <laughs> of Cabinet Ministers. You've got to try and figure out what's going... Are they queuing to see her because they love her? Or are they queuing to see her in the same sort of way that you'd queue, queue and see a man with two heads? Who knows? Um, I think, um... I mean, the, weird things can happen at the Conservative Party conference. It is kind of strange if the general view 
is that the Trust Premiership was a golden age <laughs> missed opportunity. Because I think the only people in the country who can possibly think that are the people currently at the Conservative Party conference. But if that's what they want to do, you do you. That's H fine. Hold on. It's because she was the shortest... You know, they're, they're queuing up to see her at the freak show. Yeah. Nigel yeah. Farage turned it, up. It, Nigel it, Farage turned up and no? was absolutely... <laughs> Nigel <laughs> yeah, well, Farage... Yeah. And was absolutely mobbed as well, you know, and hadn't he hasn't been back there for nearly three decades. Well, he's turning up at party at, conference at the moment, the most influential person within the Tory party, and he's not even a Tory MP. I suspect that Liz Truss was was uh, hero worshipped um, uh, more than anything because it's uh, further criticism of Sunak, and yeah. there will be a lot of people I imagine in the Tory party who share actually our belief that she should not be elected as the Prime Minister of this country without going to the people and getting a mandate. I don't agree. I've no, I don't care what party you're in. don't think it's right. Absolutely wrong. But, I wanted, but she, wasn't, she wasn't either. I, it, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I don't think Gordon Brown, Liz Truss, I don't right. think any of them should be able to become Prime Minister on somebody else's mandate. I, I can't have that. Are we going to do this Prince Andrew story? Yes, it's been please. A while. Emma, the front page of the mirror, as much as I loathe to say his name, what's new with Prince Andrew? So there's been not great relations between our King, Charles, and his brother, Prince Andrew. And there's been all this kind of dis you know, discussion about whether or not he can stay in the Royal Lodge whether he can stay in his 30-room, um, huge, huge room, with Sarah Ferguson, who also lives there, his ex-wife. Anyway, it seems that they have repaired, um, repaired uh, relations somewhat, and they've agreed that, actually, if uh, Prince Andrew pays for the repairs, if he pays for the roof, he's spent a couple of hundred thousand on the roof over the summer, um, and if he pays the, uh, I think there's two million needed to be paid, then he can stay on, he can have a stay of execution, all the royal gags, mm. repair to the throne, all of this. They can stay on there. They won't be shunted out, um, replaced by Prince William and Kate, um, if, he, if he coughs up. He coughs up with what money, though? Because remind money me what job a... he has again. Yes, no, exactly. Exactly. He's, a, he's a man on benefits, you Hugo. Should, you should get him to come on and do there this. Is no, there this. is absolutely no defence from me for Prince Andrew, but you know the old man worked for the Queen Mother for 40 years. I'll tell you exactly what this is about, right? And I've said this from day one, right? He's a, he's a joke and a disgrace. Yeah. And, and, but what will happen is, because I lived on Longwell, I've just moved. So um, William and Kate will move into Windsor Castle, absolutely nerd on. The kids are now at a local school uh, in, uh, in Windsor. Um, the thing about this guy, and I'd love your take on this. I've done this with loads of royal commentators. Charles doesn't like confrontation. Yeah. We know that. I'm utterly convinced that they've all got dirt on each other. <laughs> I am so convinced. I'm not saying in any way... Con I think Prince Andrew's a disgrace, genuinely yeah. a disgrace, but... I think somewhere in the deep, dark recesses of Windsor Castle, he's gone to the king and gone, fine, you throw me out and I'll release some stuff on you as well, Pat. I think they're as bad as each other. I'm a, I'm a royalist, but I'm telling you, he was never going to move out of Royal Lodge. Not in a million years was he moving out. Never. Well, also, where's he going? I mean, he's not going to rent a flat down the road from me in Crouch End, is well, he? he? You know, he, they, they, they're going to keep him in the They're going to keep him in a palace. And the money's from his mother, by the way, inherited 30 million quid from the Queen. Yeah, but he, he still gets, gets 250,000 a year. He gets a handout of a quarter of a million pounds a year. From who? For what? For what? For from this is his royal handout. He gets. I don't think he does anymore. I think it was stopped. I'd love some fact on that from the team, please. I thought his civil list payment was stopped. Oh, it's stopped been cut. It has when been he lost his HRH status. I don't think Prince Andrew gets a penny. But he still gets the security paid for. They don't want him doing a book and a Netflix series. This is how you keep him quiet. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be great, yeah, would it? That wouldn't well, be spare great. too. I yeah. think it's about keeping him quiet. I don't think he has yeah, exactly. dirt. I think it's about keeping him quiet. Prince Charles, uh, King Charles does not want a scandal. You throw what your brother out. Brothers in the royal family, eh? It used to be they have a duel, and now they get it's Netflix families. series. All and... families are like this, but most of us are not on the headline. You know, not the on the front. Yeah. It's true. The it's fascinating true. thing is Fergie, who does still live with him. One wonders, are they are they husband and wife again? She's very supportive. Um, it's an interesting story, but 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 King Charles, you're right, doesn't want scandal. He doesn't. But all of them, but Kate and William, have had scandal. Charles was married. There was, there was, you know, all, all, yeah, all the story with Diana and everything that went on. And, and uh, what I mean by this is a true royalist is I think they're all as bad as each other some of the time. <laughs> I think that we should have moved to William and Kate. I genuinely have said that. I think that that is the future of the British monarchy. Uh, something controversial. As long as we don't do they anything really about are Harry. Spotless, those two. I think that they should have skipped a few generations and gone straight to Louis. I think <laughs> King Louis is what this country needs, and we need him now. Hold on a second. This is very exciting news and talk today at 7:30. They're miking up the Prime Minister as we speak.
Sadly, uh, he, he's not able to talk to us, and quite why I'm showing photographs of you being mic'd up, Prime Minister, I have no idea. But there he is, a man with a lot on his plate today, Richie Sunak. There's about 75 different factions uh, at, at the Manchester Party conference who all disagree with him. Does he look nervous? How am I going to explain it? I think he does. How, what, we, am I gonna, what am I going to do with HS2? Well, exactly. Yeah. What am I going to do? And I'm in Manchester. Whoops, I hadn't realised. <laughs> yeah. Liz he... Truss has had more people coming for dinner and to see her than me. Ooh. I've got all those doctors are on strike What am I going to say? War on motorists? I can't even fill up a petrol car. What does that say? My name? Look at me. What am I going to do? <laughs> he Hugo. Does, I think he does look a little bit nervous, Hugo. Yeah, he does. He, he's, he looks... Well, he always looks a little bit uncomfortable, doesn't he? He's always he a little... Does. bit. He always, bounces. It's, it's he does a lot of bouncing. His suits are so incredibly tight. <laughs> <laughs> me they're like it's like they've been painted on straight onto the I flesh. don't understand like, yeah. why the leader of our country's trousers need to go down to his ankles for a drink they're three inches too short it's it no, annoys me no that's the modern look Rubbish. where a really it's small to make him look no. taller how he's a, he's how is a, that modern he's a he's a little man he probably shops in baby gap you know yes. he's, um, he's, <laughs> It's, it's frugal. Do you Gen mean Jojo Mama Babe or something? <laughs> Jojo Mama Babe. It's a stylist trick to make you appear taller right. um, because it looks like you've got shorter, you know, you've got longer legs do and shorter I, trousers. Do you think I should do that next year? No, you've got no hope. Um, but I think he's, I think he does look nervous. I don't know about you, but I saw him doing all the media rounds on Sunday, Emma, and he didn't come across very well. He he's doesn't not know when he's not a natural performer, whether no. he's in a field full of sheep and he's saying, you know, how green he is. Do you remember last week <laughs> yeah. he was in a field full he's of sheep? He's not a natural performer, whether he's, he's in a, a field of performer. sheep. But he's, 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 he's a not. wonk, isn't he? He's, he? He should be in the Treasury. Uh, when you see yeah. him now, to all the sort of more culture war stuff, yeah. from motorists to everything else, he always looks a bit like he's in one of those hostage videos. They're making it's, him say it's, it. It's not blink, natural. Blink if you're all right, Rishi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. precisely. I'll tell you what's really interesting. I mean, you could, so you could label me. tomorrow as the biggest speech of, of his political career yeah. because no doubt there will be election, I would think, before the next Tory party conference. So the next speech is about the manifesto and his belief. And I go back to something about Richie that, that some people disagree with. I think his, his burning ambition to be prime minister has superseded any morality or whatever that he might have. And I think he wanted the job. And, and I, think, I think at the end of the day, um, it'll be very interesting. Can he tie that party together, yes or no? You no, no, of course not. No, I mean, I mean, nobody, nobody can, but particularly he can't, uh, because in in all the areas where they are nuts, he is reasonable, and in all the areas where they're drifting towards being reasonable, he's a bit nuts. So I, I, I don't think so. Emma, I think it all depends what happens with with Labour. I think can they pull it together? Can yeah. they pull themselves together and really fight over the next twelve months? This is my favourite story of the morning, delivered with a plum by Miss Nicola Thorpe. Oh, is it? Okay, I thought you were mm. going to do this one, right? The page 13 of the mail, Hugo, tech firm is forced to axe four day week trial because it made staff more stressed and was the opposite of what they were trying to accomplish. What's gone wrong with this world, man? This makes a lot of sense to me. You know, if you've yeah. got a certain amount of work to get done, you want more days in which to do it. Personally, I work every single moment I'm alive. And I'm incredibly <laughs> chilled out and relaxed as a result of it. Having to, you know, it's like when you always get stressed before you're going on holiday, because you've got to bunch everything in. Mm. You're doing that every single week. It's called time management. Time. What happened to people Haven't in the it. past? What is wrong? <laughs> Emma, am I wrong? What is wrong with society? Oh, you need to do four days. Oh, you need to go and talk to somebody. Just do your damn job. Yeah, I cycled past an office yesterday. The kids, they were kids lying on sofas with their laptops, Jeremy. They were lying, they were reclining on sofas. I wanted to walk in there and say, sit up at a desk, pull yourself together, do some work. Oh, you'd be arrested for being unfair to the millennial <laughs> lazy. Honestly, it does make sense. No, it does I think stress. a four-day week only works if those three days are days off. Yeah. If you're shoving five days worth of Why work Why not work five support, days? If you want a you job... You don't work five days in your contract. <laughs> yeah, but other people. <laughs> this, is, this is a very interesting... <laughs> Honestly, there are moments in your life when you literally have nowhere to go. You're I don't at the moment, but I have six kids and I spend every every other one of those days running around like Ellis Chicken. But what I'm saying to you is there seems to be, on a serious note, this younger generation belief that, oh, you know, I can't do that because it's too stressful. Yeah, too stressful. We worked from light in morning until <laughs> it was dark at night and still walked up the hill in morning. You know, your dad would agree with me on this. You worked in the factory every day. Yeah, Come on. Absolutely. Got up before we went to bed. I think there's genuinely something about not being able to leave work behind these days. You know, you've got your phone in your pocket. It buzzes all the time. Employers are no, res are no respecter of the sort of 5pm curfew. So I think there is, a, there is a bit of that. It is quite hard to have real time off. I think we've gone all. soft. 
<laughs> and for the producer in my ear who's saying, how many days do you work, Dave? Keep up. She did that two minutes ago. <laughs> Four, <we're with> it. <laughs> Dave, we saw I know, a bit slow. We saw Rishi Sunak, of course, here on Talk Today and later on Talk TV. We will let you know exactly what the man that runs this country says. As or soon has as we... not said, which is... Or has not said about HS2. Well, thank you so much to Hugo and Emma. They'll be back in just under an hour. Now